Hey Polish fans, it's Caroline again and welcome to another video here at Wild Moon Lacquer. In today's video we've got a little behind the scenes sorting and comparisons and de-stashing to do. So I am in the midst of putting together my fall rack. You might have seen me set aside polishes here and there as I was looking at polishes either in mystery boxes, other sorting videos, or in certain hauls. So after all was said and done, after going through my collection and new polishes that I have, I have a lot of polishes that I would like to wear in the fall season. And I feel like a lot of them fall into the same color families. So I need to do some comparisons to whittle down what's on my wish list because there's absolutely no physically possible way for me to wear everything. So I need to whittle this down. Stat. So what I've done is I've pulled a couple of color categories to compare in today's video. We are going to do the burgundies into the deep reddish oranges and then the rust creams that are in like pumpkin to paprika to terracotta shades and then I have a bunch of other oranges down here that I don't even think you can see on screen that are various shades of orange. A lot of those aren't necessarily probably going to be de-stashed because they are super unique but I do need to whittle down what's going on my fall rack. So whew, settle in, grab a snack, grab a drink because this is going to take a while. I know it. Um, Let's just start with the row up top. That's mm, my burgundies to ox bloods and interesting shimmer reds over in here. I think the most unique one up there is actually from Reverie Nail Lacquer. This is called Firethorn. This is a really interesting glitter polish and I know there's nothing dupable in my collection for, for this. I mean, look at all that glitter. I do want to swatch this one though. I don't know that I ever swatched this. Um, I got a bunch from this brand in a D-stash. I don't even know if they still make polish, but I want to make sure that it is indeed a fall shade. I mean, it looks like a fall polish in the bottle, sort of a berry leaning burgundy, but I'm not actually sure how it will look on the nail. So we're going to try that out today. And uh, never mind the glitter. <laughs> I was playing around with some craft glitter to see if it would work for nails and it's a, uh, it's not the best choice. All right. So, okay. So this is definitely more of a squishy berry. That smells like that probably had a lot of thinner in it, which is not surprising considering it is an older polish. And it is a pretty squishy base. I'll see if I can get some of the glitter to come out and play. If I can't get this to be too, too deep on its own, I would probably be using it as a topper. Oh, here we go. I've got one of the large glitters that is a red, not built up yet still pretty squishy so we'll give that one a bit of time to dry we're gonna go on to some of our other burgundies oxbloods and that sort of thing of the other ones that i have up here i think the two closest ones is this rogue and a england the rogue is called unbelievable and the a england is called maxim they're both in the deep burgundies to burnt fall colors and they are both hollows Definitely not dupes, not saying that at all, but they are the most similar of the ones that I have up here. Um, do I need both on my fall rack? Actually, I think I can add another to the comparison because this one was down in my oranges. And technically, I think it goes more with these. This one is from Color Club and it is called Unbreakable. This one might actually be sort of a mix between the two, somewhere in between the two colors. So why not? Let's go ahead and do a comparison of those and just see which one I want to wear the most. I'm really needing a little table like or something to, for my little swatches as we go. I definitely need to expand my nail section. I tend to um, overpack my area. I think I've done a little tour of my nail area. It was a while ago, but yeah, it's quite a mess. Okay, wow. These are more similar than I thought they would be. So this is just one coat. You have Rogue's Unbelievable on the left, Color Club in the middle with Unbreakable, and A England's Maxim on the right. They're not dupes, still not dupes, but those two are definitely more similar on the swatch nail than I thought they would be from the bottle. Rogue has an additional ingredient that's really cool. It's like a micro glitter or something that's running through the polish, but Color Club has a really beautiful formulation as well. And A England is basically a one coater. I mean, that's very spectacular. We're gonna give everybody a second coat and we're gonna give that Reverie Polish a third coat. Now this is not exactly the most organized 
the fashion of video, but let me know how you like it. Go behind the scenes into my chaos of nail polish. Ooh, looks like I've got another round glitter if I can get it off of the wand. I think that's a different color than the other one that I got. All right, so that rubbery did not get opaque on its own. It's definitely a more jelly base. It does have a really pretty array of glitters. I'm just not feeling that. I'm just not feeling it, which is kind of a bummer because I was really excited about this type of polish. I love all of the large glitter, but I'm just not feeling it. I wish it was more of a deep berry or burgundy shade that I'm seeing in the bottle. So I think I'm actually going to de-stash that one. Surprisingly enough, I think that one's going to go in our de-stash. The other ones we have Rogue, Color Club, and A England. Again, not necessarily dupes, but they do have very similar vibes on the nail. I don't need all three on my fall rack. Of these three, I think I want Rogue on my nail polish rack. I really, really like this one. It is... A bunch of different fall colors all in one plus it has the micro glitters as well as the hollow so that's the first one that we're going to add it to the fall rack do i need the other two if i have that one probably not so we're going to go ahead and see if we're de-stashing any of them are we de-stashing any the color club hollow is really spectacular i would hate to just get rid of that but oh man Every time I'm like, I'm going to get more, more cutthroat. I'm going to de-stash more. And then I swatch them and I'm like, ooh, pretty. <laughs> oh, just look how holographic that is. But A England, funnily enough, in the bottle, you can't really see the hollow as well as you can here. But when it's swatched, when it's swatched, it is really, really good. Hopefully that's at least somewhat coming through on camera. I mean, that's, it's amazing. A top coat would help liven it up as well. So let's just do that. Might as well, cause I'm having a hard time deciding. Hopefully this new Sally Hansen top coat that I got in a bag at Goodwill doesn't blunt out hollows. So there is the A England, the color club. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, we're keeping the A England. I already know that much, but I don't need it on my nail polish rack this year because I do already have Unbelievable by Rogue Black, or they're close enough, uh, but we're keeping it. We're just not putting it on the fall rack. Um, this one by Color Club, I know I'm taking way too long with this as a choice, but I really, really like it. I just, um, do I need it? Because if I have the other two, would I reach for this one over those, over either of these? Probably not. Okay, we've got another one for the D-stash. We are gonna put Color Club's Unbreakable in the D-stash. Wow, okay, well, we're off to a fantastic start with two in the D-stash and only one on my full rack. I mean, that's pretty good. That's what we're trying to do. <laughs> All right, um, moving on to our deep burgundies with the shimmers or flakies. I have quite a few of those. I think there's at least three that I can compare. The other two are hollows and we'll compare those to each other. So we have Dear Santa from ILNP, Blood Like Liquid Fire from Dollish Polish, and Blair from Zoya. So again, I don't think they're dupes. They are completely different. Their finishes and even colorations are very, very different. But I think we're going to swatch them in this order and just sort of see what pulls me in because I don't think I need all three on my nail polish rack. I already have some other ones that I haven't even pulled for comparisons because they're just so unique. Well, I guess those aren't really, aren't really in the burgundies. That one is though. That one is Bees Knees Lacquer Dragon Heart String. Not a dupe in any way, shape, or form. We're keeping this on the nail rack though. That one is going in my full rack. Okay, so where was I even going with that? <laughs> about I have some burgundies on my rack. So I was just noticing that I still have some other burgundies on my fall rack. So I'm going to pull those to do some comparisons of as well, or at least whittled down. So we've got three more. Okay. So we're going to do these three first because like I said, these two are the most similar in the bottle anyways. They're two sh uh, shimmer shades. ILMP has more of a shift to it though. Um, and I already know I want this on my rack. I did swatch that when I was doing one of my other sorting videos. Which one was it? It might have been this one here. I think that was it. 
and it's got kind of a plummy purpley red jelly base which is kind of hard to see in the bottle but that's it on the nail and I already know I'm keeping that one so maybe I won't swatch that I know again super organized on this um I think I will go ahead and compare this one just swatches and see if I need both probably not I think we're going to put Blair's uh Zoya Blair's back in the grouping of polishes I don't need that on the rack do I need the Delish polish on the rack let's find out and this one is probably one that I have more to compare now that I've added a few more this is also not exactly a red as I'm finding out it's more of a berry tone so I wonder how that it will build up in a few coats let's see who we're going to compare that to now that we know the tone I think this one is more tonally a berry Pennywise the Dancing Clown from Lemming Lacquer and again probably not a dupe but we're gonna see if I need both on my rack and we are already diverging from <laughs> the colors that I was on originally since uh, that Dollish Polish is not strictly a red as I thought in the bottle. This one by Dollish Polish is actually reminding me of an Essie Ruby Slippers maybe. Does that remind anybody else of that polish? I swatched that when I was originally doing my red comparisons like two years ago and it's got a similar vibe to it. I don't remember if it's redder or not or if it does lean in that berry shade but this one is dollish polish blood like liquid fire this one is that lemming lacquer pennywise the dancing clown neither are reds but they are red leaning as far as their respective color families go and again definitely not dupes i mean they're not that similar to each other other than the berry leaning purpley red but do I need both on my rack? I don't think so. So from that one, we're keeping the Lemming Lacquer Pennywise the Dancing Clown on my fall rack. That is staying put. But I think we are cutting Dollish Polish from the rack anyways. Um, I do want to compare it at some point to that Essie and see if I need it in my collection. Yeah, we're going to at least give it a comparison. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Uh, the other ones that are in a burgundy shade that are pretty unique, I don't see them being compared or duped out at all. We have Bees Knees Lacquer, All the Dinosaurs Feared the T-Rex. It's also a magnetic. So once you magnetize it, you get a deeper base. And then the other one is Potion Polish, Cranberry Fizz. This one has a bunch of orange glitters in it, so definitely a unique and not likely to come across a dupe, at least of the ones that I've pulled. This one, I do want to do just a side-by-side -side comparison, oddly enough, to this one, because this is also a red magnetic. This is from Fancy Gloss, and it's Devil's Delight. They aren't either of them strict reds. They are orange-leaning in their burgundy shade, but they both do darken to a very similar feel on the nail. Again, not dupes, but similar enough vibe that do I need both on my fall rack and I think the answer is I would like to keep the bees knees on my fall rack and then I will cut fancy glosses devil's delight from that rack and I'll have to see if I want to hold on to it or not um I just got it it was in one of the mystery boxes and I really liked it um I didn't realize that bees knees lacquer was so similar in the base color and also a magnetic so we'll have to see how that ends up going cranberry fizz is also a berry leaning shade but again it's got those orange glitters in it again unlikely to find a dupe so i think i will go ahead and keep this one on my fall rack okay the other two that i can compare right off the bat are these two hollows i have a lily pad lacquer called the 12th doctor and bluebird lacquer uh, Centaur of Attention, which was a rewind polish from Polish Pickup. They, again, are definitely not dupes, but they are both... Well, I was going to say they are both burgundies, but I'm seeing a bit of a purple lean in the Twelfth Doctor from Lily Pad Lacquer. So let's see how it looks on the brush. See if it's more purpley altogether. Oxblood, maybe. Let's give this polish nail just a fresh coat. 
and then we'll compare that to Centaur of Attention. Definitely different. The Twelfth Doctor is much darker by comparison, whereas Centaur of Attention is that bright but very deep red. So very different. Do I need both on my fall rack? Well, I definitely want Centaur of Attention on my fall rack. I've had this since I got it in Rewind, and it's one of those polishes that everyone raves about. So I want to go ahead and keep it on my fall rack, see if I can't get it on my nails. Um, this one, I think we will go ahead and keep it off of my fall rack. Again, not that it's a duped or anything, but I only need so many reds, burgundies on my fall rack, and I already have, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. That's a lot for me. <laughs> so <laughs> let's go ahead and put that one aside. And I mean, those are just the specialty finishes. We still have yet to compare our creams. I did a comparison of my red browns, and I know I have more of them. I didn't put all of them on my fall rack necessarily, but I thought I at least had an Essie that should have made it, and I'm not finding it. Ah, that's because it was on my top picks for fall. <laughs> Okay, so this one's Bed, Rock, and Roll by Essie, and that one is kind of similar to some of these other polishes that I do still have on my fall maybes, so let's go ahead and use this as a basis to pull some colors that might be similar enough and do an additional comparison. I mean, that one's lighter, but we'll compare it anyways, see if I need all of that on my fall rack. But we're going to do these two as comparisons. Ren is a new one that I just got called Brick House, and then Ella and Mila Wanderer. All right, so definitely not dupes in the same color family, but most definitely not even close to being dupes. Well, <laughs> I guess it depends on your view. Uh, but Bed Rock and Roll is there up at the top. It's the darkest. The one down here on the left is Ren Brick House, and then the lightest is from Ella and Mila, and that's Wanderer. So not dupes, but do I need all of them on my rack. Oh my goodness, you guys might hate me. I think I do. <laughs> this is one of my favorite color families, so I think I'm going to be keeping all three on my rack. This one I like because it's got that sort of a mauve -y tint to it, and it's not as dark as the other two. Bed Rock and Roll is pretty dark, so I think, shockingly enough, we will be adding all three to the rack. Oh, yeah. Actually, one of the ones that I did want to think I would be able to compare is this one from Pretty Beautiful Unlimited called Oxblood, but honestly, I don't think I have anything else pulled that is this color. When I compare it to the other Oxbloody shades, this one has a different hue to it. It has more purple. So I want to swatch it and see and just see what we're dealing with. So here it is in two coats. This one definitely has that purple lean to it. I don't even know how to describe that. Very dusty, like a dusty oxblood. I really, really like that though. I definitely want that on my fall rack. So we'll put that in the fall rack already because I already know that none of the other shades are going to be in the same hue. These all lean more orange. This one is Zoya's Pepper, Sinful Colors, Orange, which I'm pretty sure we did do a comparison of in one of my other videos. OPI's I Love You Just Be Cusco and a color club called Love Them and Leave Them. And then I could also compare the one that I just got in one of my Goodwill bags. I'm not sure what order these will be posting, but I did unbox this in a, or I should say unbag, this one in a Goodwill bag. Again, I don't think it's dupes exactly, but we can see how they all look. And I figured this would take me a while, but I did not realize I wouldn't even get through the first row in under 30 minutes. That's, oh my goodness. <laughs> I hope you guys grabbed a snack. Okay, I will say Pepper is a fine candidate for my upgraded brushes because ugh, the skinny brush from Zoya is not my fave. The Sinful Colors is actually kind of squishy. I think I should have done two coats when I did my comparisons the first time. Someone reminded me that a second coat can deepen up the shades. I wasn't really thinking about that for these richer shades, but that is definitely a squishy one. All right. And these are all pretty different, I'm finding, as I'm swatching them. Like I said, I didn't exactly think they would be dupes necessarily, but I did think some of these would be closer than 
closer than they're turning out to be. In fact, we are just going to go ahead and switch out one of the Zoya brushes right now because that is what I ended up getting for their Zoya sale that happened a few months ago. I haven't been that impressed with the sales, to be perfectly honest. Uh, not to uh, bash them or anything, but when they had their sale, what was it, in 2019? It was like 70% off. I could get polishes for $3 a piece. I was loving that. Since then, though, I mean, I know 2020's happened and all of that, but their sales in the past two years have just really been sort of lackluster. And for this last sale that I got these on, it was like 70% off up to $75 or something like that. So you could really only get so much before the discount stopped applying. So I ended up getting as many of their wide brushes as I could and one nail polish. So we're going to go ahead and just switch out the brush. Who knew this would turn into a change your Zoya brush video? I really, really don't like their skinny brushes and I really like this shade, so I want to be able to enjoy putting it on. So you, unfortunately, the way they choose to do their brush is the, the entire cap goes away, and you have an entire new one that goes on. Aha, uh -huh. okay, so apparently you have to bash it on. <laughs> oh my goodness. Anywho, so that is the new wide flat brush on my first upgraded bottle of Zoya, at least that I had to do myself, not to go on a side tangent, but I do really wish that they made it easier to do that. I mean, it seems pretty wasteful to have to throw away the whole thing, but anywho. All right, so let's go ahead and try out this new wide flat brush on that first one here. And yes, so much better. Then we have that sinful colors. This is a lot lighter than the other ones. OPI, I love you just be Cusco. A lot redder by comparison, as is this one from Color Club. Pretty red, but a bit darker than the one from OPI. And the Sally Hansen is about as dark as the Zoya, but a slightly different shade. So that's these five here that we just swatched. Like I said, they're all very, very different from each other. Do I need all of them on my fall rack? I definitely want Zoya Pepper. I've I've had this in my collection for a while. I forgot to pull it out in my fall favorites and fall head of the line sort of a list, so I want that one on my rack. These other ones, let's go ahead and just tighten these up so I don't worry you guys. The Sinful Colors is actually a really interesting shade of this like burnt orange. And I really, really like that. So that's staying on the rack too. Oh my gosh. I love you just be Cusco. I, that's a beautiful shade of red. <sighs> I think I'm going to try that one. Actually, you know what? I take that back. I think the one that I like the best is from Sinful Color. So yay. <laughs> OPI, I love you just be Cusco will be not on my fall rack, but I will be putting Love Them and Leave Them by Color Club on my fall rack. And then the one from Sally Hansen. It's a beautiful shade, but I feel it's uh, not exactly like soya pepper. There's a different richness to it. <sighs> wow. See what I mean? I I started with my reds when I did my first day stash and I was having a hard enough time. I cannot imagine what it's going to be like when I get to my purples. Can you? Because holy moly. Uh, we will go ahead and put this in the not in my fall rack. Like I said, they're not dupes of each other. And I like it. It's different enough from Zoya Pepper that I want to give it a try before I decide whether or not it is unneeded in my collection. That's like 13 reds in my fall rack, you guys. That's ridiculous. Okay. On to some other shades. Or actually, we've got one lingering red. This one is very different. It's sort of like a cinnamon red. I think I did swatch this, but I can't find it. So I think we're going to go ahead and just swatch it on here so that I can compare it to some of the other reds. This one is a China Glaze from the Grinch collection that I got in a mystery box. It has a lot of gold shimmer in it, which is sort of not a winning addition of an ingredient for me, but I liked the tone of the red. I thought it was kind of interesting, but I don't think I need it on my fall rack. I don't think it's a very fall-esque polish. Honestly, I don't think I would wear it because of how much gold is in it. So this one is going in the D-stash. Kind of making progress. Little by little. 
for our Are They Orange? Are They Red? And they're full of shimmers. We've got at least three. Do I have any others I can add? Any that I left up here? I mean, that's not quite the same, but it is similar in the tone. So maybe we'll put that in there as well. That one is actually an oops. It was uh, Beyond the Nails Lunenburg that came out. There's sort of a mix up, I guess, with the type of glitter that they used. And it's not supposed to be orange. It's supposed to be purple, like purpley red. So we're going to see how this one looks because it is a pretty color. It's just not what it was supposed to be. I think these are the ones that we're going to do a comparison of. Like I said, again, not dupes, but they are in that similar red, orange, rust color hue. Um, similar enough that I don't think I need all of them on my fall rack. Um, I have had the Zoys for a long time. I just got the Glam. That also came from a mystery box. So this is Roadkill. Very interesting shade, kind of like a pinky, pinky rust. And then I actually don't know if this one is Tawny or Autumn. I have both of them by Zoya and they're both side by side. So we're going to have to see <laughs> who is who when I lift the bottles. And then Lunenberg or the Lunenberg oopsies. Like I said, not a dupe. Just want to see how it compares color wise if I need all of these on my fall rack. I think these two bottles of my Zoya's are also going to be getting new brushes because blech, I really don't like the skinny brushes. All right, so we've got brushes changed and two coats on everybody. We've got Glam. Oh, uh, what was that? Autumn, I think, is the orange one. And then Tawny is the redder one. And then Lundberg Oops by Beyond the Nail. Again, not dupes necessarily. Just want to see which ones I feel like having on my nail rack. And I mean, oddly enough, I mean, I know I said they're not dupes, but they're very different as well. Uh, not even really similar to each other, especially the two Zoys. I was thinking that I might be able to pull one of them. And they do have similar shifts in their shimmers, but Autumn is definitely more of that really beautiful, almost neutral leaning orangey brown. And Tawny is more like a muted marsala with that same shift in that shimmer i think i'm going to keep autumn though it's unique enough in these colors that i want it on my fall rack and i've had it like i said for a few years i do think that i'm not going to keep tawny on my fall rack yeah i just i have way too many reds ready oranges already on my fall rack i still have all of these oranges to go through so we're, we're cutting we're cutting stuff i do want to keep roadkill by glam polish i think that's a really fun and unique color and shade. Let's gloss up Lunenberg and see if I'm keeping it on my rack. It's one of the ones that actually I meant to do it last year on my rack, but it was still set aside from the mishaps with the ingredients that I didn't see it when I was pulling my rack. So that is it all glossified and that is really pretty. So what's going on the rack? It's going on the fall rack. It's, it's already on the fall rack, you guys, but there it is glossed up. Look how beautiful. It's all micro glitter, so I am definitely going to be wearing a peel off base coat, though I can tell you that much. Okay, we're gonna do a little cleanup. We're putting some of these that we're not keeping in the fall rack away. All right, now for some of our unique, uh, our orangey, reds, rust, fall shades in our flakies, I've got at least this many pulled. I don't know if I have any more over here that I haven't necessarily pulled. We could do that one. That one's probably, again, not a dupe, but you've got those fall flakies. Okay, I think that's what we're going to go with for our flakies. So these I'm not really sure if I'm going to have dupes. I know I do have something similar to this one. I just don't know if I've pulled it. Um, but the closest two would be these two. Flare from Polish Me Silly and Gloriana from Lacoster. Or actually, how did I hear it that recently pronounced? Lacoster? Lacoster, so I'm not really sure how they compare to each other. So I am going to swatch and see if I can compare that to our Lacoster or Lacoster. All right, let's see. Dead on dupes. Am I, <laughs> am I wrong? I think they're basically dead on dupes. I mean, right? They're basically dead on dupes. <laughs> I'm trying to find the differences and I don't know that there are any. I think these might be our first true on dead on 
dupes. I think they are the same flakies and they are the same topper formulation so they don't have anything in the base itself. It's just a clear with these flakies. So I don't need two of them. Like I said, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I did have another one floating around because these are beautiful fall tones. I think we'll be going ahead and de this one though and keeping the Polish Me Silly. There's more in this bottle, so that's sort of a win for me. So we're going to add Polish Me Silly's Flare to my fall rack and actually de this one, which is Gloriana. Okay, more flakies. This one I feel is super unique. This is Rattlesnake from Lumen. I don't see that being too too similar to any of these but I do want to go ahead and swatch these all next to each other to see some flaky goodness and how they compare. I'm pretty sure a little shellfish is actually not even close to these but it does have a similar vibe in its flakiness not in its base color. The Fair Maiden is new to my collection so let's just see how they compare. Oh wow, yeah, that is tan by comparison in the base, kind of a pinky nude. That one is absolutely chock full of flakies, wow. That was the nailed it. And this one is the Fair Maiden. Different flakies actually all together. Those are actually iridescent, not multi-chrome like the ones in Nailed It. And then this one is definitely a topper. Okay, so yeah, definitely not dupes anywhere here at all. <laughs> they definitely have similar vibes in the bottle, but Lumen Rattlesnake is definitely just a topper. Um, not saying that in a bad thing, in a bad way at all. I will be adding that to my fall rack to try over some colors. Um, this one is Fair Maidens. The Phantom Flakey is one that I don't can't say the name or can't I don't know how to pronounce the name I think it's like French or something um has more iridescent flakies whereas love is weakness from nailed it has the multi-chrome flakies and then a little shellfish from wildflower lacquer is completely different so again we don't have any dupes this is not helping me um I do want to have a little shellfish on my rack. I mean, look at that. That is so gorgeous. Very unique in its swatch to what else is on my rack. So I want to add that one. Love is Weakness is the next one. And that one I have worn and I really, really, really liked it. Do I need to wear it again? Maybe. And then that one from Fair Maiden is really, really unique. I love the tone of that base. Oh, I know. We are not making progress on these flakies, you guys. Less I. All right, so Lumen Rattlesnake is definitely going on my rack. Like I said, that is a topper. That's going to go in my topper row. I think I only have two toppers so far that we've gone over. Um, these two, I mean, this one in the bottle especially is just so stinking gorgeous. This is that Fair Maiden with all of those iridescent flakies. That's the name in case you did want to try to look it up. Like I said, I don't know how to pronounce that, but that one's also going on my rack. That one is just absolutely gorgeous, and I'm going to put Love is Weakness on my rack again, and I don't know if it's going to make it to the front of the line necessarily because my rack is huge. It's uh, It's got a problem. <laughs> but we'll see. Okay, some of our orangey, burnt fall, multi-chromes. I don't think I've pulled all of them, to be honest. I know I haven't. There's another one from Color Club. There's one from KB Shimmer. Here's one from Restored by Polish. That one goes more there. Here is another one by Turtle Tootsies. That one is a hollow as well and that one I really want on my fall rack so that is what we're competing against here you guys just so you know <laughs> they're just getting their heads up because that one is really high up there on my list of polishes I want to wear that one actually should have made it into my top picks or favorites but technically I haven't had this very long so that's the reason why it's it wasn't in that video I was trying to be very specific about that so we've got six. This one by KB Shimmer is definitely the most unique. I really don't think it's going to compare. It's public displays of confection. 
It's got those holographic flakies that I really like. And this one I feel is a lot lighter than the rest, also in a purple base. So we're just going to add this straight to my rack. I already know I like it. It's not going to compare to the other ones, I'm pretty sure. <sighs> Am I? Mm. Oh, we're going to swatch it. We're going to swatch it. I'm pretty sure it's not going to be even remotely close, but we're going to swatch it because I'm curious. And again, a lot of these probably aren't even going to be that close to each other, but we're going to see how they compare. So this first one by Saki has a very dark base. Polish Me Silly is more copper. Restored by Polish I know is a lot more complex and has a bronzy orangey in gold. Our Turtle Tootsies is a little on the sheer side but has amazing hollow. Color Club I think, no actually I was going to say it might be a little sheer as well. Um, and it is by comparison to some of them but really pretty shifts on that as well and this is our kb shimmer with that blue base all right so there are those again the kb shimmer is all on its own as far as the uniqueness of its base and that shimmer so we are gonna do like i said i would at the beginning and just add that directly to my rack in fact it was on my reds rack and technically this should have been in my blue so we're gonna add that over on my blues blues and purples so that leaves these other five the sake cosmetics i actually don't like the base of i think it's a bit ashy for me personally so we're going to be de-stashing hysteria i just don't like how dark it is and i just don't see myself reaching for that kind of a polish yeah so we're we're in the de-stash mood we're going to go ahead and get rid of that one the next one is polish me silly that's this one here that one does have a really beautiful shift um, it is fairly comparable, though, to the one from Color Club, which was Burnt Out. Um, again, I think these ones might be fairly well close to being dupes of each other. So these two, I think, are our second official dupes, or at least I would say dupes. So Polish Me Silly Dynamite and Color Club's Burnt Out. Again, I don't need both of them, so I will be de-stashing the Color Club. I I mean, it's not like the Color Club had a bad consistency, but I do like the Polish Me Silly, so I will be holding on to that one and putting that in my fall rack. And then the next two is Restored by Polish and the Turtle Tootsies. The Restored by Polish is a really good two-coater. You have some additional glitter or flakies, and then you have that Turtle Tootsies, which has a really beautiful hollow flare to it as well. That one, like I said in the beginning, is definitely going in my fall rack. This one, I'm pretty sure is the one that when I unboxed it, I had my jaw practically on the floor. It was so, so spectacular. So that one's going on the fall rack. That is fifth turtleversary. And then I am definitely also adding the Restored by Polished I Will Rise to my rack as well. <sighs> I thought for sure we would get rid of more, but getting rid of two from that selection, I suppose, is not terrible. I know. Okay. <laughs> Moving on to our pumpkin-y shades. We've got a lot of those. Um, this one's fairly unique. It's not really a pumpkin-y shade either. It's orange, but not pumpkin. This is Bees Knees Lacquer, the Fire Girl. New to my collection as well. I think this one might be one of the more recent purchases from Bees Knees Lacquer. Just a dazzling polish, but the reason it's in my maybes is I need to decide if I want this shade of orange in my fall rack. So we're setting that aside for the time being and going into our pumpkins and other shades here. As you can see, I have a, a type with that as well. We have a lot of these sort of burnt oranges already. There's another one. These are more of the lighter to darker shades. Not quite as burnt orange. This one was a terrible case of ugly bottle syndrome but that can go up there and then maybe we'll start leaning into these guys here so we'll put that one down here okay so we've got our two sections of our oranges these are just our creams all except for the bees knees lacquer which does have a shimmer in it but i well am i going to compare that no i highly doubt it it's not pumpkin never mind we're taking the bees knees out of it so we're back to <laughs> all 
cream formulas, two OPIs, a China Glaze, and two Essies for this range of our burnt oranges. I'll be perfectly honest, I haven't worn this shade yet, so I also am a bit curious if I'm actually going to like it on me, but we'll, we'll see. This first OPI is have your panettone and eat it too. Our China Glaze is spice to meet you. OPIs, it's a piazza cake. Essie's head to topaz. Essie's plain koi. All right, so there we have two coats of all of our burnt orange. I think I did manage to sort of gradiate these nearly. Have your panettone and eat it too is the lightest, verging on almost like an orange, a muted macaroni, like macaroni and cheese. Uh, really, really unique to my collection, sort of a mix between a mustard and an orange. Then we have China Glaze Spice to Meet You. This is also new to my collection. Not a new collection from them necessarily, but I did find it at the Dollar Tree. That one I think is most similar to OPI's It's a Piazza Cake. And I mean, those are really, really close. Like, really close. There are some nuanced differences. Spice to Meet You is a little bit dustier, but tonally they are very, 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 very close. I honestly don't know if I need both. I really like how Spice to Meet You is looking on my skin tone. Whew. Oh man. Man, oh man. Okay, on the other hand, what is that? To head to Topaz, I really, really like. This is almost like a Marsala leaning orange that is beautiful. And then Plain Koi is our darkest and more brown leaning orange. So both of these are staying on my rack for sure. Those are the most unique of those. And uh, have your panettone and eat it too. So those three oranges are going on the rack. These two are basically dupes. Like I said, um, very, very, very similar to each other. Trying to decide if I need another more saturated color or a slightly dustier color. Honestly, I don't know which one I would prefer. I think I'm sticking with Spice to Meet You and Destashing OPI's It's a Piazza Cake. I mean, that was sort of on my wish list for a while because it's such a beautiful shade of orange, but it's basically, basically a dupe. I mean, a vibe dupe anyways of that Spice to Meet You. So there we go. Uh, moving on, let's do... These are deeper terracotta shades. Down here towards the end, we're not exactly into dupe territory necessarily, but we're going to see how these all look. I don't know if we might be able to squeeze in that last row because we're at over an hour worth of filming. I don't know if you guys want to hang out for that long on a sorting video, but... So we have Painted Polish Stamped in Sweet Potato, uh, Burials Rusted Vintage Boots, Kale Polish Brick Sidewalk, Essie's Yes I Canyon, which I think came out in the same collection as Bed Rock and Roll. Essie's Rocky Rose, which I also think came out in the same collection, I think. Could be mistaken. Mm -hmm. And Essie's Very Structured. Again, I'm not sure how many dupes we're going to run into here necessarily, but they all have a similar enough vibe. That is gorgeous though. Wow. All right, so there are six more colors. <laughs> Uh, again, not dupes necessarily. Um, the one on the end, which is very structured by Essie, is the most brown, although I think it could have potentially been next to these other two painted polishes, Stamped and Sweet Potato and Burial's uh, Rusted Vintage Boots, but it's got mo the most brown in it, the most like chocolate milk color. These two from Essie's are definitely the most orange leaning, and Rocky Rose is the lightest, being almost like a neutral terracotta. That is the problem with a lot of these colors. They fall into the very similar category, but they're all still beautiful. <laughs> it's like, well, do you need them all? No, I don't need them all. Do we need to de-stash them? Probably. Can you pick out which one will go? Uh, no. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna we're gonna see if we can't make this happen. Um, stamped in sweet potato and the burial one are pretty close. That's these two here. I mean, again, not necessarily 
dupes per se, but they're close. We have stamped and sweet potato here, and this one is rusted vintage boots. Rusted vintage boots. Oh my goodness. I really like the rusted vintage boots. Those are really, it's just a beautiful shade. Stamped and sweet potato is also a gorgeous color, and they are slightly different. Oh my gosh. So I don't think I need both of those on my rack. Technically, I probably don't need both in my collection, but you know how it goes. I think I want to keep Burial's Rusted Vintage Boots on my rack. And I'm going to keep Painted Polishes stamped in Sweet Potato, but it's not going to make it to my rack this year. The other one that's fairly similar is Kale Polishes Brick Sidewalk. Again, it does have differences. It's a bit lighter than this one which is the one that I'm keeping from Burial. Brick Sidewalk, though, was one of the colors from Kale Polish that I'd never got when they were open, and I ended up having to track it down in a D-stash, and I really like it. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous color, but is it similar enough? Yes, for most people, it probably is. Um, oh, man. Well, it's similar enough that I don't think I need it on my fall rack if I'm keeping the Burial, so we're going to keep that aside. These last three... Yes, I Canyon, Rocky Rose, and Very Structured. Like I said, Very Structured is the most brown. Actually, on my skin tone, it's straight up brown. I think we're going to de-stash that one. I don't know that I would like that on my skin tone. So we're de-stashing Essie's Very Structured. And then we're taking a look at Yes, I Canyon and Rocky Rose. Rocky Rose, I really, really like. I think that's a gorgeous, lighter option to have in my rack. So we're going to add that to my rack here. Yes, I Canyon is actually a bit brighter. I mean, it still is a fine fall shade, but it is a bit on the brighter side. Trying to decide if I would want that on my fall rack as an option, potentially. No, no, we're not filling it. So we're just going to add that to polishes that we're keeping, but we're not putting on my fall rack. And I have trailing end here of polishes that haven't really matched up too well with other polishes. The Essie Expressi that I had at the last position here on row two was Essie Express Desk Manny. And it is by far the lightest color that we have out here. I think we're going to do a quick little swatch on one of the wheels here. I think we're going to use it the last spot on this one. Let's just see how it looks. I'm pretty sure I swatched this one already, but you know, let's see how it goes. It's definitely a muted peach. Very pigmented and saturated. Pretty nice color. I don't know that I want that on my fall rack though. I think we're okay putting this on the not fall rack. And then moving on to the last row should be fairly easy to get through. I don't think there's too many comparisons, so let's go ahead and get the comparisons that I do see over with. That uh, would be these hollows here, sort of the burnt shades with hollow. Yeah, I think just these three. So we have BCB, Yuki Ona, Color Clubs, Sidewalk Psychic, and China Glaze, TTYL. I mean, again, the BCB is pretty unique. I don't think that's going to be very comparable to these other two, but I want to see how it looks. As an indie, they're always going to have the head start sort of on uniqueness, and already I'm really loving what I'm seeing. Sidewalk Psychic definitely was on my list of polishes that I really, really liked, mentally anyways, when I did a swatch of them. And the China Glaze Hollows are just gorgeous. So again, not necessarily thinking that these are dupes per se, but do I need all three of them on my rack? All right, so here we have those three. Definitely keeping the BCB on my rack. That is Yuki Ona, very beautiful orange. Then we have Color Club's Sidewalk Psychic, also an absolutely stunning color, kind of like a deep copper red orange. That one's also going on my fall rack. And the other one, TTYL by China Glaze, is actually a lot lighter, more of a rose color. And I'm trying to decide if I want this on my fall rack. And I think I want to save this more for like a winter mani. Maybe? 
honestly, I'm not sure. I mean, in some lights, that pink is pretty bright. In others, it's still pretty dusty. But I mean, the hollow on these formulas is just phenomenal. So we're not putting it on the fall rack, but we're keeping it then on to some colors that I know I'm adding to the fall rack. This one is Cadillacers Origins. We're not going to swatch it. I already know what it looks like and I absolutely love it. I got this a couple of years ago. This might have been a 2019 from Polish Pickup and I was just in love with it when I saw it swatched. Still have it to wear it. So it's going on the rack. This one I don't think I have anything else to compare it to either. This is Bella Bosio's Candy Corn. Stunning and very unique shade of this like sweet potato orangey color with a beautiful mix of flakies and shimmer. Definitely going on the fall rack. Um, these ones here are kind of in the same color family. All of these are kind of similar to each other. So do I need all of these on my rack? This one is Blush Lacquer's Cha Cha Cha. And I mean, it leans pretty gold. The reason why I kept it when I got it in the mystery box is it leans kind of like that rich golden rod, like Baroque gold, not a blaring bright gold, if that makes any sense. But I'm not too sure how I think I might like it on my skin tone. And then we're also going to swatch Glisten and Glow's Great Barrier Reef Plate Coral. After adding this to my collection, or as I was adding this to my collection in my app, I did discover that the original pictures of this were a lot brighter. So it seems to have faded from a very bright, deep coral to this rusty shade of orange. And then Pretty and Polished Pumpkin Spice is one that I've had, I think, for a while. I don't remember if I got this one in a D stash or not. Okay, very different, actually. A lot brighter of an orange. Okay, Color Club is by far out and away completely different than the ones we've swatched this far. Uh, it might be the closest to MDJ Creations, which is what we're going to be swatching next. And that's even darker. Oh my goodness, that's beautiful. Wow. Okay. So definitely none that are dupable here. I thought for sure that we would have a bit more similarities across the board, but we have only one that is that golden color, which was Cha 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 from Blush. Then we have the Glisten and Glow, which was Great Barrier Reef. Pretty and Polished, which was Pumpkin Spice. That was the orange that I think had hollow and flakies. And then Color Clubs Back to the Grind that had all of that glitter. And then MDJ Creations Phoenix there on the end. The brightest and darkest actually. Really, really gorgeous color there. That one's definitely going on the fall rack. That is just a beautiful, rich color. Look at all the goodies that are in there. You wouldn't really know it was that dark from the bottle because a lot of the pink pigmentation or shimmer has settled. But that is a stunning, stunning color. So of the ones that are left, this one is blush, cha-cha-cha. As you can see, it's definitely like a goldenrod shade. I just don't know how I would like it on my skin tone because it is very yellow, but it's a unique color and it is mustard leaning, which makes me want to try it for fall, but I still have yet to actually get a yellow on my nails. And I just don't know that I would reach for this. So I think we are gonna go ahead and just de-stash a cha-cha-cha. I just don't know. I just don't know. So we're going to go ahead and de-stash it. Then Great Barrier Reef is this one. And like I said, it has faded. It was originally, I guess, a much brighter color, like almost like the Pretty and Polished, more of a vibrant shade of corally orange. And it is a pretty color. There's actually a bit of linear holographic in there, as well as some shimmer. But I think this one might come off a bit too close to my skin tone. I mean, obviously it's more orange. I think we're actually de-stashing that one. Then down to Pretty and Polished and the Color Club. Color Club definitely has a lot going on. It is more of a rose gold though, so I don't think I want it on my fall rack. I think we are going to pull this from the fall rack. And then Pretty and Polished. I think we will keep this on the fall rack. That's a nice a nice option. So that's um, pumpkin spice going on the fall rack. Last are these, is this rather large section. Um, none of these are dupes necessarily, but we have a bunch of shimmers or toppers. And technically, pathological liar liar is also a sheer, so that's going to go up here as well. Do I need all of them? Probably not 
both of these. These look like the most similar to each other. We have Conjure Copper from Sally Hansen and Orly's Touch of Magic. Let's go ahead and swatch those and see what we're looking at. In fact, if they're too similar, I don't think I'm keeping both in the, my collection. Well, I don't need both if they're going to be dupes. Okay, well, they're not dupes. Interesting. All right, so I did them on its own in two coats and then also as a topper. So they are, as a topper, they're closer <laughs> than they are on their own. Uh, Conjure Copper is on the left from Sally Hansen and Touch of Magic is on the right from Orly. Not dupes, there's a lot more yellow in the one from Orly. Here they are over those other rust colors that we were swatching earlier. I actually don't remember which ones they were, but this one is the Sally Hansen. This is the Orly. Um, I think if I was using one as a topper, which is probably what I would be doing, I like the Orly better. So I think the Orly will be getting a reprieve and we're holding on to that. And the Sally Hansen, which I actually just unboxed in a Goodwill bag, is going to go in the D-Stash. So this one will be going on the fall rack. I think that's a beautiful topper. Then we're on to these four. Again, these are by no means dupes. They're just toppers. I don't know that we need to compare them necessarily. Um, although we will try out this one, which is China Glaze's Golden Enchantment. A lot of people love this polish. In fact, when people were finding it at the Dollar Tree, some people were grabbing like bottles and bottles of it. I don't know if I need more than one, but I want to see how it looks over some of these colors. So we're going to try it over this one here. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. So I'm not sure which color that one was. That might have been one of the Essies that we swatched, but... It adds a beautiful twinkle of golden hollow. So I do like that. We will be keeping that on the fall rack. And then this one here is Geekish Glitter. I think that's Jishpuri Jimbani, possibly. <laughs> it's a topper from Polish Pickup. It's a really beautiful one. I want to just try it over Piazza Cake or no, have your panettone and eat it too. Oh yeah, this is definitely staying in the fall rack. That is a stunning combo right there. Hopefully you can see that. Look at all that. It's got iridescent glitters and shimmer and micro glitters. There's a whole lot going on in here. It's a very fun mix. Very, very fault-esque. So I think that that is a really beautiful combination. That was have your panettone and eat it too. Look at that. Wow. Oops. Oh, I just stuffed my thumb in it. But <laughs> there you go. Oh my goodness, it's getting late. But anyways, that is a really beautiful combination. China Glaze's Pathological Liar Liar. In the bottle, I didn't necessarily think that it was going to be a sheer, but it very much is. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at it. I don't have any random single spots open, so we're going to do something kind of funny and do it over that one, just so you can see how sheer it is. And that's that craft glitter that I was using as a test. So that's how sheer it is. You can still see the glitter perfectly well. And it's just adding a very, very light blush of color. Actually looks pretty nice over a pink iridescent though. Let's try it over one of the creams. Let's try it over one of the ones that I kept. I don't actually remember which ones I kept. Uh, was this one one of them? Possibly. Let's try it. Similar enough. Look at that. That's beautiful. Oops. There we go. That's beautiful. It adds a nice wash of glimmer. Totally transforms the polish. Yeah, very pretty. Definitely want that as a topper as well. I think that's a nice transforming top coat. And then our last topper that we're going to take a look at is Rogue's Desert Unicorn. And this is a really beautiful mix of, I think, two of her famous toppers. So you have the holographic particles, the iridescent shimmer, and then you have the multichrome flaky. So a whole lot going on. We are going to try this again over one of our smoky oranges. Hoo -hoo -hoo. Oh yeah, that is gorgeous. Definitely staying in my fall rack. That is beautiful. All right, and then the last few that I have in my fall maybes for these oranges and reds, my goodness, it's been a long video, <laughs> are two from Bees Knees Lacquer. The first one is the Fire Girl. The second is Dom. I'm wondering if this one is just too bright 
for the polishes that I'm usually looking for for my fall rack, but I'm also wondering if I want a brighter polish option for when I do feel like a brighter color. So maybe we will go ahead and add the Fire Girl to my fall rack just so that I have a different shade of orange to choose from in case I feel like something different. And just to compare it to BCB lacquers, they are very, very different. There's a completely different shimmer in that one from BCB. And then Dom is sort of a muted, almost like pinky leaning orange. I don't know that I would reach for this for fall necessarily. I think I will go ahead and cut that one from my fall rack for the time being. This one is Coloristic Carol's Where Are You? This one came out in Polish Pickup a couple of years ago. Yeah, back in 2020, and it was based on Scooby-Doo. Very, very unique polish. I just haven't worn it, and I don't know that it is something that I feel like I would reach for. I mean, it's a super, super unique color. I know I probably said that. Um, let's see how it looks here. It's got a very interesting mix of glitter. Well, I don't know if this swatch is going to work out because apparently I needed to shake my bottle. So I got a very uneven coverage on that second coat, but there it is basically in two coats. You can see all the varieties of the glitters in there. There's a soft blue. There's some gold holographic. Again, super, super unique. I just don't know... I haven't found myself reaching for it and I don't know that I would. So I think I am going to be de-stashing that one. I just, I'm, I had this flurry of affection for this type of polish and I just haven't found that I'm wearing any of them that I got except for ones in spring. I, I really like these types for spring and certain types for fall, but usually with flakies in them, not with glitter mixes. So I think we're de-stashing that one. The last two, again, are not dupes, but we have Without Us, You're Nothing from Glam and Happy in a Million Ways from Garden Path Lacquers. We're definitely adding this one to my fall rack. It's a beautiful micro glitter with shimmer and with iridescent flakies. This one, I think, has some top abilities as well because it is all in somewhat of a clear base. So you would basically be putting those micro glitters and all of the iridescent goodies on top of another color. So again, let's try it over one of the deep pumpkin shades. Oh yeah, that's really pretty. And again, you can layer it on its own as well, but look how that looks in one coat over a deep terracotta. Really, really pretty. So we're definitely keeping this one on my rack. And then this last one was a maybe I want it on my fall rack, but I think I have already added a few unusual shades of oranges that were sort of at the head of the line. And I have added the brighter one from Disney's Lacquer. So I think we're going to keep this one for another time. That was without us, you are nothing. All right, so there we have it. These all here are the ones that we've perused and made selections from. All of these here are ones that I still need to go through. So those are a lot of my browns, various shades of browns to charcoals and some lighter colors as well as some that are more of a berry tone or even Marsala. So we've got a lot of other colors to go over, but that's how my fall rack is beginning right here. <laughs> Obviously we haven't even begun to touch my purples. Those are over there in the corner where you can't quite see them. But in any case, that's what we've been doing this whole time. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Feel free to let me know down below how you like this, if I should change the format of this kind, or if you just really aren't interested in seeing me sort and go through nail polish. Let me know how you're enjoying them, or if you prefer the other types of videos, the hauls and all of that stuff. But thanks so much for hanging out with me if you've stuck through it this long. I hope you had a snack and a drink along the way and hopefully had a good time taking a look at some polish and some swatching and all of that stuff. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in that next one.